You're listening to Podcast, the personal productivity podcast from CRM Audio. I'm Joel Lindstrom here with Matthew Anderson. Matthew, how is your quarantine going? I am doing my darndest to stay productive, but uh, I feel very lonely. Very lonely, Joel. How about you? <laughs> oh, I've, well, I normally work from home a fair amount of the time, as I know you, you sometimes do as well, right? Yeah, so I, I was going into the office Boy, like four days a week and just to have the social aspect of it. So this has been actually quite a change for me, even yeah. though I can work remote. Yeah. So same thing here. And it, the weird thing here is usually when you work from home in our line of work, the people you work with, at least some of the people or customers or whatever are on the phone or are, are in the office. Now everybody seems to be at home. And I don't know not everybody's at home, but it seems like it, at least the people I've been working with. And so it's like the, the things that disrupt you when you're at home are disrupting them now. Their kids are, are doing school at home. So people are really forgiving if something happens that disrupts the meeting yeah. or whatever. Nobody's saying, oh, it's a very unprofessional to have your dog barking like that because everybody's dog is barking. Yeah. Well, I, I tell you, I've had more more times where I've been on – uh, in meetings and people have video on and their cat is like right there walking <laughs> between the, the video camera and themselves or they, they kind of pan down and say, and there's my dog. Uh, and one, one coworker literally just got a dog and he had the, uh, you know, li- lifted up the puppy, uh, did whatever. And then a uh, few minutes later forgot he wasn't muted and was saying to the dog, no, no, but like another <laughs> another person was talking like explaining something on the call and it was confusing like who are you saying no to <laughs> it's funny uh yeah i think and one thing i don't know what it is but my one observation i have is people seem to be turning on their webcams more have you seen that more than normal yeah, I I definitely have. I'd I'd gone through a phase about a year ago where I was turning on my camera all the time and nobody was nobody was on that same bandwagon and I kind of backed off and now now the cameras are definitely coming on. Right. I've heard people talk about kind of the the culture of Teams versus things like Zoom. When you're on Zoom meeting, people generally it's it's video by default where Teams a lot of people, at least internally to my company, and I've noticed Microsoft people too, generally turn the camera off or don't turn it on, where now I'm seeing more people do. So maybe maybe it's a little cultural change happening, taking advantage of this. And maybe it's part of it might be people feeling alone and wanting to see people and be seen. So might, yeah. it'd be interesting to see how this is going to change how people work long term. Yeah, I, I, I think it'll definitely shift people to being more comfortable with having video on. I would I would speculate that one of the reasons why, uh, you know, a lot of at least in the, the circles we run in, uh, we don't have video on is we're on conference calls too many hours of the day. And it it's not about being social in that in the same way that like a, a Zoom is kind of social first. Um, and with back to back to back calls and video on for all of them. I think a lot of people don't want to see that they're maybe not paying attention <laughs> in some right. of those more, more redundant calls. So or you don't want the vice president of the bank to see you in your scruffy t-shirt at where you haven't shaven or showered for two days. Yeah. Well, and, and we've had in the, in the spirit of encouraging more video, a lot of understanding and, and even leadership saying, hey, don't worry about it. Put on a hat. We'll send you out a hat, whatever. Uh, <laughs> don't worry about having everything be um, you know, perfect for video. Let's just see each other and, and try to stay connected as we go through just a, a difficult, uh, unprecedented time. Right. So have you changed your, your workstation at home? Have you done anything since you're just working from home now to make yourself more effective or productive? Yeah, so a couple things on that. One, uh, if if you may recall, I just moved. Like literally, we closed on a new house and moved inside of the last month. Yeah. So I've been I've been trying to settle into my office here, and the timing is great because now I have a closable door. Um, but 
now that I don't have the option of going into the office anymore, there is a purchase I just made over the weekend that will be delivered on Thursday, which is a uh, sit-stand desk. I, I realized that I have transitioned to using a standing desk almost all day long every day. Um, a coworker of mine had called it out a, a couple of weeks back. I'm like, you're always standing. And boy, within two, three days of being in the home office and being seated the whole time, I just, it was, it was a, a very big shift for me. And uh, I finally pulled the trigger over the weekend. I'm interested in doing that too. What, which uh, standing desk did you go for? So I went for the uplift desk uh, based on a, a couple of different vectors of feedback. Um, I like the, the wire cutter. Uh, the website, which is a great one for reviews, kind of the the, the best of pick your category. Uh, so they had one for standing desks, and uh, Uplift is is one that they really liked. Uh, there were a couple of things like the ergonomic curve that the reviewers really liked about it, and they have some good um, options that go along with it. There's like a kitty control on the the controls for it. So my kids can't just like run up and start pushing the button and mess around with the desk. And those, those kind of things matter. (laughs) So every picture I see on the uplift desk website has just one, either a laptop or one monitor. Do do they work with multiple screens without it all falling off? Yeah, they do. Um, So, and you can buy, like you can put monitors on the desk or you can buy, uh, uh, arms that mount to the desk, the the weight capacity for raising it up is 350 pounds for the motor. So um, if you have 350 pounds worth of gear on your desk, uh, all in monitors, I, I salute <laughs> you. I think the Honest MVP has something like that um, that I saw. But um, yeah, that that's that's not an issue and they they do have a, a variety of different sizes um and one thing i i did not opt for a desk that's quite this big but if you go for one of the uh five foot or larger desks uh or or longer rather they have an option of mounting a hammock underneath for when you need to take that nap <laughs> awesome yeah, yeah that be, productive nap that'd be good yeah, so that, I've thought of doing that like, myself because I find, like you said, I sit more when I'm working at home and then lose track of time and then realize I haven't stood up all day long. So that's good. Yeah, and I, I, I did opt for the uh, the balance board. They gave a, an option for a balance board as part of that. We'll see if I end up actually using it, but it was a freebie throw-in that came as as part of the package. So uh, we'll, we'll see on that. Jury's still out. Yeah. So I'm curious, how about how about you? What's the anything new to the the Joel Instrum setup? Well, several things, but you know, probably the one is I just was getting tired of wearing headsets all day long, and mm. it's it's kind of you, you you're working from home, you're doing more conference calls. A, my my ears just get tired of having a headset on all day long, and also if you have a one that's battery powered or Bluetooth, you got to stop and charge it up and worry about it being charged and all that. So for Christmas, I had actually asked my wife for one of the Jabra, I don't know what it's called, but it's like the puck thing, like the speakerphone thing. And yeah. so I've been using that and it's it's pretty awesome. It, it, it reduces my fatigue from being on calls because I don't feel the pressure of headphones on my head all day long. Now, I wouldn't use that if I'm in the office because it's kind of rude to talk on the speakerphone, especially office like mine that doesn't really have walls or ceilings, so sound travels sure. all over the place. Yeah. When I'm just home by myself or in my in my uh, cave with 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 myself with the door shut, this is really good, and the, the sound pickup is really good. It's it's like I haven't heard any complaints about oh, it sounds like you're on a you're on your cell phone speakerphone or something. It it works really well. I think you have one of them too, right? Yeah, I do. I have one. I can either plug it in USB or it has a Bluetooth option. So I sometimes I'll connect that up to a, a cell phone in a in a pinch in a customer meeting too, if we don't have a good solution. But yeah, I, 
I like the puck, uh, and I have a, it's a Jabra. You said you have a Jabra? Yeah, it's 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 that one. So I, that's actually why I got it, because I've been in that situation in meetings where there's no speakerphone, and yeah, you can connect it to your cell phone. But I said, hey, I'm just going to try and use it here, because, you know, I, I'm i sick of wearing headphones, talking on the phone six hours a day, so... And it's it it works really well. It's also pretty deep. It's not the the best like music speaker, but it sounds okay if I want to like play Spotify or something during the day. It, it, it's a little bit better than just my music coming from my laptop speakers. Yeah, no, def- definitely makes sense. Um, for for some of the tech that I've added, I did go out and I picked up a good quality mouse for at home. Okay. Uh, I. I'd, I'd typically use the trackpad if I was at home because I was in in the office quite a bit. And there, when I plugged into a workstation, there was a, a mouse that was attached. But I needed to have something pretty pretty decent there, so I got a, a nice, comfortable Bluetooth one that I can. I have a button to be able to switch it between my Surface Book and my Surface Go without having to like disconnect, reconnect, which is pretty nice. Yeah, I like how Logitech uh, does their. Is it a Logitech or? Yeah, yeah, it's a Logitech. Yep. Logitech has gotten to where you can have on keyboards have like four different devices, including your phones and and your uh, and your tablets hooked up to the yep. same keyboard and just toggle between them. Yep, it's that it's that same concept, but on a mouse. I haven't I haven't tried hooking it up to the phone. I I don't know if that would work, but <laughs> um, I definitely have it for the for the Go and for the Surface Book. Um, and then the other the other piece of tech that I, I picked up and it was just delivered actually earlier today is I got a Surface Dock since both of my devices are Surface and I got sick of having to pack up my power cord every time I was going to you know plug in and unplug from at home. So I have uh, I have the Surface Dock connected up to my monitors. And uh, as well as to the the network cable, so I don't have to do dongles, and I'm not reliant on Wi-Fi. Yeah, I've had one of those. I I don't have my Surface Pro anymore, but I, I had one of those. The one I had worked pretty well. Um, every now and then, it would get kind of wonky, but I'd have to like unplug it and plug it back in. It also mm-hmm. got a little bit hot sometimes. So I know sometimes the, the Surface the Surface power adapters can become like heat sources. So if if you're cold in Minnesota, you can you can you can get some heat from. Them. Yeah, ex- exactly. In the uh, in the office setup I have, we, we I can definitely use that. I have a little ancillary baseboard heat here. Uh, maybe if the 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 Surface Dock power supply gets too warm, I don't have to kick that on. <laughs> yeah, but that would be a good productivity topic, which is docking stations, because I have I know people who swear they can't work without a docking station. I'm kind of mediocre on docking station. I find them good if you need to add more ports, but as far as just the convenience factor, if I have to plug cords into my laptop when I start working, when I get to the office, it, it doesn't bother me. It seems to bother certain people a lot. Like, oh, I have to plug my monitor cable in, then my network cable in. Yeah, it's maybe. <laughs> yeah. So the the biggest challenge for me and one of the reasons i like having the the docking station is um i i find i end up using my USB C port more often than i thought i would okay Uh, if if for no other reason that's what my yubikey uses is the USB C port Uh so if i and i only have one of those on the surface book so if i i and it also it won't work through i had a um a USB C uh, docking station. You know, so it was just one thing to be able to plug in, but the YubiKey wouldn't work through that. It had to be directly connected to my computer. So I was like having to unlock, uh, um, un, or detach the, the, um, you know, USB C port. My monitors would flip over, everything would go back to the main screen. I could plug in the USB, uh, YubiKey do my thing, unplug it and then plug everything back in. And that was just like, well, that's a hassle. Um, so anyway, I, uh, I, it was, if I wasn't here as much, I don't think I'd do it so much. Uh, But, uh, now that I have to be home-based much more, at least for the foreseeable, uh, short to midterm here, um, that's, that's just one of the things I said, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm not horsing around anymore. So, 
let's ask you this question. Do you have the Surface Dial? I do not have the Surface Dial. I do have a Surface Dial. I got it, I think it was last year or year before at MVP Summit. And I got it because it was I had a credit I could spend, and it was like half price at the Microsoft store. It is probably the world's most useless uh, accessory. <laughs> I mean, it, it does. It basically is a button that you can assign certain actions to. So if I want to turn my volume up or down or scroll with it, it also works on the Surface with certain apps like uh, like uh, Sketchbook and things like that. Um, yeah. But uh, but it, it it's pretty it's pretty useless. But I mean, now that you've now that you've got the surface the surface dock, now you need a surface dial to go with it. I think. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> if uh, if if you're trying to pawn your surface dial off on me, maybe I'll give it a try. But uh, <laughs> otherwise, I'm not I'm not going to be running out and and trying to insert that. That that's the the vein of productivity that just ends up being a waste of time from the sounds of it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I think uh I think as far as on the quarantine of work from home, everybody's doing work from home tips. I mean, I think I would echo what a lot of people are saying, which is find reasons to interact with people, keep a regular schedule. I am a fan of still <laughs> showering in the morning and getting dressed, uh like feel like you're going to work even if you're at home. Those kind of things keep keep it yeah, but I'm setting up. Uh, I'm setting up meetings with friends just to get together, even though we aren't supposed to have meetings with more than, I guess, three people now. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I hear you on just having some of the the normalcy that comes with getting up. I mean, my my habit forever has been taking a shower in the morning, and that really helps me get ready for the day. And if I miss that, I just I don't. I don't execute throughout the day in the same way. So I've, I've definitely kept some of those things. I, um, you know, I put product in my hair. I, I put on real clothes, not just the, the stuff that I, you know, the hooded sweatshirt that I had on or the, um, you know, uh, the sweatpants or whatever. It's, it, it, there's, there's some of that that's nice to have and keep a, a little bit of routine around. But, yeah, for sure. um, oh, go ahead. I was just agreeing with you. I, I agree. Take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, as as we look at that, there are definitely some things where, you know, for me, as I as I look at trying to keep some of that normalcy, it's it's because some of the things that I know I had set out at the beginning of the year as far as goals become a little bit more difficult. Uh, to be able to actually make good on, um, you know, just because they involved interacting with people uh, in in different ways. Some of them are social goals and and being out and about with people, kind of getting out of the house and making sure I'm doing that more. And that's just not not physically recommendable right now. It is it is possible, so I won't say it's not possible, but not. It's certainly not recommended. Um, so, you know, for, for that, there's definitely been some goals, both, both personal and professional that I'm having to take that time to, you know, reevaluate what does this look like moving forward for me? How am I going to adapt it? Making peace with the fact, um, that even though I said it, um, you know, the seas just aren't, aren't cooperating with being able to, uh, to reach that Island I'm, I'm trying to get to, or, or, you know, meet that goal I'm trying to achieve. So, um, you know, definitely, uh, that's something I'm going through. I've chatted with a couple other people, uh, who have had similar things. You know, are there any, any goals that you're having to reevaluate or, or kind of redirect on? I think my goals of speaking at conferences, <laughs> uh, that's had to change and, uh, just kind of, kind of, kind of reevaluate what I'm doing. I think what helps me is the specific thing I had a goal to do, you know, so like I was going to go on an international trip this summer, we've canceled it because mm -hmm. whether or not things die down before then, it's just with, with when Disney World's closed, you know, nothing is sure anymore. So, uh, so with that in mind, I've changed the specific things I was going to do, but I think I think I still have the same goals, and I'm finding other ways to move it forward. So instead of speaking at a conference, I'm going to do more webinars, maybe, or I've kind of gone back to back to the basics of kind of some of the things that I used to do. That's where on CM Tip of the Day, I've been publishing the videos about 
what is coming with the next release, which is more like what I used to do. And mm. it's been kind of refreshing to go back, go back and do that kind of with a new, new, more modern twist to it. So I think, yeah. yes, I, I have. I was going to say, I've, I've really loved those tip of the day videos. They've been a welcome addition, at least, uh, at least to my day. Yeah. So kind of my little secret there, which maybe isn't a secret is, you're learning something, make a short video about it as you learn it or after, right after you learn it. And that it's a good check to see, do I really understand how this works? Am I, do I understand this enough to demo it? But not something that has to be a two hour long thing. It can be a four minute thing. If it's, if there's a nugget of something that would help somebody else or help me later, uh, then it's useful. And then I've got, I've got a, maybe a small deck that I can compile with multiple topics or demos that I've done on this, on these things I can put piece together into a bigger piece. So let's say for UG summit next, next fall. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's great. Well, keep, keep them coming. I appreciate those. I, I appreciated your longer form webinar on the, the April release stuff. I think it certainly helps that, you know, the, the platform is coming out with so much more content at such a, a regular cadence that those things, uh, you know, it, it's not like you do that and then you wait around and for the next, you know, year to 18 months, you don't have anything to talk about. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Um, yeah. And I think, th- I think one thing that's nice about, uh, if there can be something nice about this weird time that we're living in is it has given us all a little bit more time to take a step back and maybe do some of the things that are on our longer range goals that we have been maybe putting off. So one thing I'm trying to do is do some learning about some of these other things like learn to take better pictures and be a, be a better photographer or learn to improve my speaking ability. And that ties into the next thing that mm-hmm. that was a great transition. So the next thing on my list, which I've been playing with and I did before my webinar, I did about the 2020 wave one release as uh, the PowerPoint coach. Have you used the PowerPoint coach, Matthew? I have not used the PowerPoint coach, but pre pre, uh, pre recording, you mentioned it and it sounds awesome. Yeah. So here's what you do. You, it requires you to use PowerPoint online to rehearse for your presentation. It's not something you use while you're delivering a presentation, but open up from, say, OneDrive, open up one of your PowerPoints inside of PowerPoint Online, which is basically open it up from OneDrive. Don't download it, but just open it in Mm -hmm. in PowerPoint Online. Go to the Slideshow tab and click Rehearse with Coach. What happens is it opens up a presenter window, and you start presenting, and the AI coach gives you real-time tips as you're doing it, as if you had, say, your own Toastmasters meeting going on, but it was with a robot, not other people. And it will tell you if you're using verbal clutter, you're saying and too much. It'll tell you you're reading the slide. Stop reading the slide and summarize. And it will tell you if you're talking too fast, if you're using good ver- verbal variety and not speaking in a monotone way. I found it really, really helpful. And so when I was pre- preparing for that presentation, it said I was talking too fast and I was saying, and so too much. So hmm. uh, I was more mindful of those things and tried to speak at a more reasonable pace. And I think, and it'll give you a nice summary at the end as well. So I think anybody, even if you've been presenting a long time, you kind of, if if you're like me, get into the, I've done this so long. I'm I'm good. I don't need to practice. But a little bit of practice can help everybody, and this can help you get through it. And the other thing that's kind of helped with this is if you noticed on some of the recent podcasts, I've been doing transcription of the of what we say to text. And boy, that's a good way to see all the glaring examples of how many times you say you know and um. <laughs> I hear you on that one. There's there's nothing quite like that recording. When I when I first started in Toastmasters, I would record every single one of my uh, speeches that I was giving, and I would, I mean, I'd get the feedback from whoever was evaluating me for that speech, but then I'd really have a lot of maybe overly critical feedback for myself 
uh, but I was really trying to improve. And the, the tough part of doing that. And one of the reasons why I didn't continue it was it just takes so much time. I mean, say it's a 15 minute presentation and that'd be on the short side of things for a lot of presentations that I, I give professionally. I would have to spend another 15 minutes watching that back. And it sounds like you know, PowerPoint coach, which I'll definitely check out can help cut down on some of that because it's, you know, real time while you're doing it, compiling that feedback and letting you know, here's the areas where you can work on what you're doing. Even if you go through it just one time before you do it and get the tips, uh, get, get the feedback, I thought was really helpful. Yeah. What I'd love is to use that as the reason why people need to, if I'm in a, a group setting to get their slides in on time so we can actually practice it, but maybe the day before we actually have to present it. <laughs> we can dream. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. So anything new with, uh, with uh, the other tools we talk about frequently, like Outlook web. Yeah. The, there are a couple of things in Outlook, Outlook web that I've really been appreciating here lately. One of them is in my inbox, I will get a little prompt if there is an email from, say, last week. I had one come up yesterday where a coworker had asked me a question last Wednesday, and it said, you never responded to this. Do you want to respond now? And it was somebody who, in my my network of, you know, if you look at my Office 365, my, my analytics it's one of those people that I'm collaborating with all the time. I usually get back to quickly. So this one truly had slipped through the cracks. It was a great reminder. I could just kind of take action on it and get the, get the response out there. It was really helpful, especially when I truly had just forgotten to get back on that one. Yeah. I've noticed that in Outlook on the desktop, as well as Outlook web, if you click my analytics inside of Outlook, it gives you those kind of prompts as well. But are you saying that Outlook Web is now giving that to you natively without having to go into my, my analytics? Exactly. I don't have to go anywhere special. When I'm looking at my inbox, uh, I, so I use like the focused inbox. And above where my focused inbox starts, it will tell me, you know, hey, there's this email from last Wednesday that you haven't responded to. Would you like to? And it's kind of highlighted the the keyword that it thinks it is. So I'm just, for me as a user, I'm not having to go anywhere special. I just went into my inbox and it's trying to tell me that insightful idea of this is probably something you meant to respond to. And I can either, you know, hit reply from there or I can say, no, not a task and let it go. Uh, a little bit similar to sometimes I get like the, well, daily, I'll get the daily digest email that will have maybe open to do's or that sort of thing. But this is much more uh, in my face when I go into the inbox. I know sometimes, sometimes that's kind of hit or miss for me. It, it will suggest things that are tasks that aren't really tasks. Does it get smarter over time? Uh, it's still hit and miss for me on some of those. Uh, and frankly, I'm not, I'm not looking for perfection. I'm just looking for the, the, low hanging fruit that have come back, but I have not seen in those any explicit way, uh, nor have I gone looking to say, no, this, this feedback is kind of a, you know, a bad one. Um, unlike, uh, if I think of like, a you know, a dynamics 365 equivalent where you can give feedback on like lead scoring of, Hey, I thought this would be, you know, better or worse because of these reasons and being able to submit that feedback back in. I, I have not seen the same thing in the uh, in uh, Outlook. Yeah, one thing I appreciate with the MyAlytics, specifically in Outlook, is how is how you can, it will tell you emails that have documents in them and let you schedule time to review those documents. Mm-hmm. So that's that's helpful, especially when you have if you're the reviewer or approver of some kind of document, you you're slammed with a lot of meetings, and you you need to block time off for that. So there's and there's also here's here's things you ask people to do as well, and and yep. so you don't forget about those things. 
Yeah, and it it really helps legitimize that those things do take time. It's really easy to marginalize that, you know, say, oh yeah, you know, I I have time to take that extra meeting because I don't already have something on my calendar when reviewing documents just takes time if you're going to do a good job of it. And especially if you're part of a, a, a chain of workflow, you doing that is is important. Um, it needs to have that that attention shined on it. And you were saying there's an easier way to schedule to-dos with Outlook Web now? Yeah. So the thing that I have taken to is you can highlight the the a part of a text in your email and if you hover over that it gives you just a one click to be able to create a to-do task from that so sometimes there's maybe a, a smart recommendation you know if you the email says you know create uh, let's follow back up next thursday or something like that where outlook is doing that for you i often if i'm looking through an email will see one or two or three things that are called out there that I want to remember to go do later. And I can just highlight it and click the uh, the hover to-do button and it creates the to-do task for me. Um, and then it shows up when I when I review my task list later in the day. Uh, okay. Yeah. And our uh, and wonder list is is officially dying or is will will be officially sent to pasture. Here, we've a couple months. we've been yeah we've been talking about this one for a long time i i wondered yeah. how long it would be kept on life support as uh, capabilities were ported over to to do but yes uh may 6th is the last day of wonder list very very sad um yeah i have a lot of good wonder list memories but frankly at this point i mean i i don't even have the wonder list app installed anymore. I mean, I, I have become a convert to, to do as they, they brought in the, the capability set and, um, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty happy about that. Yeah. And they've even added some features that weren't part of Wonderlist, but kept still the feel that you had with Wonderlist. There's really only one feature that I have sometimes missed, uh, which is the ability to, as part of a work or school account to be able to have tasks I assign to people that aren't. So that's that's been one thing that I sometimes miss, but I don't use that that frequently, and and so um, I can. You could set up a personal Microsoft account and then be able to do it, but um, I think for the place it's playing, which is it's now the replacement for tasks in Outlook, and it's much better than that, and it's mm-hmm. uh, much more flexible to work with. Uh, yeah, I, I'm 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 all to do all the time. Yeah, me me as well. And I, I actually really appreciate how it brings all of the planner tasks into the fold as well, bringing them as part of that same kind of to-do processing that I, I have. I've, I've really appreciated that. Now, uh, one thing with the, the final farewell to Wonderlist is I, I didn't realize my wife was still using Wonderlist in a, a limited capacity at this point. Uh, she, she had never really been nudged off until she got the the surprise email saying yep we're really shutting down the service so, so how, did, how did this this realization came to you when you saw her open her phone one time and you were aghast to see her use wonderlist <laughs> no she uh she she uh she opened her email and said they're finally getting rid of wonderlist what am i gonna do <laughs> <laughs> Actually, her question is, do they finally have uh, recurring tasks inside of to-do? And I said, yeah, they, they do. <laughs> she said, okay. <laughs> but um, one, of the, one of the things that she started using to-do, because she, she said, okay, fine, you know, it's time for me to make the, make the switch or figure out what, what the new uh, app is going to be. She said uh, she really likes the, something I didn't even consider to really be much of a feature, but it's just the my day and how simple and empty my day is unless you yourself fill it up with tasks for the day. Um, you know, she's not someone who wants to have 35 things that are checked off of her to-do list by the end of the day that doesn't give her any extra boost, any extra juice. And in fact, it, it makes it feel more, more like, you know, it's a, a never ending list by comparison. So she likes being able to just pick two, maybe three things 
add them into the list for the day. And yeah, she'll do other things too, but they're not part of the official to-do list for the day. So it was interesting feedback. Very, very different from my usage pattern. Right. I I will say I like the, the My Day feature. I don't admit to using it <laughs> mm-hmm. just because I don't, I still tend to, if things are due on a certain day, I create an appointment. And if there are things on my to-do list to do, when I get to them, I put them on my to-do list. Sure. Yeah, I I mean, in a in a similar vein, I will uh I will have my to-dos and I will actually if you pull up the Outlook web calendar, you can pull up the to-do list um as one of the navigation items in the header and literally just like um drag your to-dos out onto your calendar. Uh, to be able to schedule that time. So I, I definitely do that kind of thing. And you can pull over your your tasks or flagged emails, or if you use grouping or categories on in to-do, um, you can kind of filter and bring those items in. So I, I'll say I use a hybrid there. Right. I, when I look at my to-do, I see I've got all these groups that I set up, set up before that I don't really use. So like with my OneNote, I need a to-do cleaning. <laughs> Fair enough. Apps, maybe another, app spring maybe another cleaning topic. time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So her favorite feature is the is the, and I I think that Wonderlist had a similar my day or today kind of view, didn't it? I don't remember what actually went into it, but I think the 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 difference in to do is if she had something on the day for yesterday and she didn't do it, and she goes into my day today it starts out blank and she gets to decide if she's pulling that thing in from yesterday that she didn't do, or if she's going to focus on something else. And I think she likes that, uh, agency in what's showing up in my day. Ah, well, good. I'm glad she likes it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I love the, I love having my flagged emails show up there too. That's really helpful too. That's, that's one thing that's, it's, uh, it has sped up my workflow with, uh, even like dragging tasks, dragging emails to, to there, it's just easier to flag them and have them be tasks. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, to that, to that point, uh, the, the only gap that I really have in features that I want to see is I want to be able to categorize tasks that come over from planner. Those can't be uh, labeled or flagged or, you know, anything else. So that's, that's a little bit uh, disappointing for me, but um, yeah, that's, uh, you know, we'll get through it. <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> All right, well, Matthew, stay productive. Thank you, sir. You too. 